what is up people and welcome to another video in this video i want to cover a topic that's um, fairly new and sticking out its head in the scene and it's called deno so if you're a programmer a devops engineer a software engineer and you're interested in wondering why what is deno the purpose of this video is to go over the basics of deno what it is why it exists how to go and install it, how to run an application, how to dockerize it, and why you should even care. So without further ado, let's go. So what is Deno? Deno is a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. Why secure? Those familiar with Node.js may know that code has access to various system calls which can make security a big pain. You basically have to trust all the packages you import. Deno on the other hand provides more unprivileged sandbox where JavaScript and TypeScript can run. And you have to explicitly allow network calls and file access using Deno flags. It's also written in Rust, previously written in Golang. Now the author of Node.js, who is the same author of Deno, Ryan Dahl, was very fond of server IO and performance. And Golang makes an exceptional fit for server-side code. Now, if you go over to the Deno standard library and you start looking through this, you'll find many similarities of Go, such as FMT, FS, HTTP, and you've got UUID. This is because if you scroll down, you'll find that Deno is a loose port of the Go standard library. There are very similarities between Go and Deno. So you'll naturally find some of the design philosophies um, of Go and Rust um, present in the design philosophy of Deno. And instead of shipping like a thousand files and in an installation guide, um, if we take a look at Deno, it ships only with a single executable file. So very similar to how things are done in the Golang world. And if we, if we scroll down and we go over to the releases page on GitHub, we'll notice that if we take a look at V1, the installation process is very simple. We can just download the zip file and run the binary. So we can just say deno run and get started very easily with no real install process. So you basically have the awesomeness of a statically linked compiled code on the server side, and then you have the dynamic JavaScript uh, and TypeScript world on the sandbox side. So you get the best of both worlds. So one of the problems in the Node.js worlds was the build system. You used npm install and um, node modules to pull and install packages. Now this looks entirely different in the Deno world. So in the Deno world, it's a lot like Go where you can almost go get uh, files from a Git repo. But if we take a look at the source code here, we import via URL. So we can just say um, import serve from, and we can pull the standard library stuff like an HTTP server from the URL itself. We can also pull this from like a relative path so we can have our dependencies in the source code as well. And Deno will download and install the dependencies when we start up our server using Deno run. And when Deno downloads our dependencies, it also caches it in a depths and a gen folder structure. Now, I highly recommend you check out the guide to Deno Core. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a video I want you to watch, which is 10 things I regret about Node.js, which is um, made by um, Ryan Dahl, which basically will give you perspective on the problems that Node has has had in the past and more in-depth reason as for Dino's existence. So as a DevOps engineer or software engineer or someone who just writes code, you're probably asking, why should I care about Deno? And the answers are fa fairly straightforward. It is important to understand the pros and cons of different technologies. So by looking at the design principles and philosophies about Deno, you'll automatically start learning about why Deno exists. So you'll start looking at some of the cons of Node. You'll start seeing some of the positives about Go and Rust, and then you'll automatically start expanding your knowledge about a technology and different runtime. So you just become a better engineer in general. If you're in a position in your company where um, people are starting to push Deno as a runtime for a new microservice, you'll be able to make smart and informed decisions and understand the reasoning behind the, um, the motive. As a DevOps engineer, you'll also want to be able to support um, build pipelines and deployment pipelines for if Deno becomes a thing. So as everything, everything will 
need a CI CD system. Deno is also very new and it's rapidly evolving so it's as any other technology it's better to learn it sooner rather than later so you don't fall behind and you stay ahead of everyone else. All right, so before we start, this is the Docker development YouTube series GitHub repo. Everything I do in the series on this channel is available on GitHub. The link's down below to the source code so you can follow along. So for those who know me, um, the easiest way to get anything up and running is to use a Docker file or to use like some kind of small Linux container environment so we can throw away um, stuff when we're done with it. So let's take a look at the um, documentation and the installation is just to run a binary. So what I'm going to do is quickly get a container environment up and running. So I'm going to say docker run it for interactive dash dash rm to remove it when we're done. I'm going to expose port 5000 as well since the application they want us to run as the getting started guide is running on port 5000. And then I'm going to mount my um, local files in this folder, in this deno folder, I'm going to mount it into the container and I'm going to mount it into a directory called slash app and I'm also going to set my working directory as slash app and I think for this we'll just go with Debian Buster Slim. So very small Linux container and we can now go ahead and install everything that the documentation wants us to do inside of this container. Now it looks like to install Deno we're going to need curl. So the easiest way is to say app get update, app get install curl, get that installed quickly. And when that's installed we're just going to run this curl and I'm not going to pipe it into sh. I'm just going to run this to get the file. I want to, I'm interested to see what it looks like. So I'm going to say curl, I'm going to download that file and because I mounted a volume, we can see the install SHS right here. We can then go ahead and take a look at it. Now, at a brief look at this, I see it's not really installing anything. It just goes to the Git page on the releases page of GitHub for, D for Deno. It downloads the zip file and then goes ahead and extracts the binary from there. So it doesn't really do much. So let's go ahead and do the same. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set an environment variable that I want Deno version 1.0. Let's go ahead and install our dependencies. So we install um, curl and CA certificates and unzip utility so that we can extract that zip file. Cool. And one, once that is done, we can then go ahead and run curl on the GitHub releases page for that version. And we can output that guy as Deno.zip. You can see it's gone ahead and downloaded the Deno.zip file. Um, we can then proceed to extract it. So we can say unzip. We can then apply the permissions on that utility. And then we can move it into user bin. So that should be sufficient. We can run Deno. <clears throat> and look at that, we got Deno 1.0 up and running. So it's a single binary that we can use, just download it, very easy to install, looks like it. Um, so it's be perfect for container environments. So we scroll down to the getting started um, section here. It says Deno run and look like we can just run a file. This is a TypeScript file, we can just run it from a URL. So you can run remote code as well as your own code. So let's get out of that, paste that in there. And look at what it does. So it goes and downloads. Um, it compiles the TypeScript. So it also has compilation built in. So as soon as it runs the application, downloads dependencies, compiles the TypeScript, and then runs it. So we can see welcome to Deno. And when we run that command a second time, we can see it's cached it somewhere. So it has a gen and a dep folder where it actually caches the stuff. So you can see gen and deps is the folder where it caches file compiled to JavaScript. So it compiles the TypeScript into JavaScript, caches it in here. And then it also has imported remote files. So any kind of stuff we want to import, it'll cache it into this deps folder right here. So we can kind of use this as like a cache. We can mount it into a container if you want to cache the files. And that's pretty interesting. I just noticed if you go deno.help, um, there's a bunch of sub commands that it supports. And one of them is deno bundle. Now I haven't tested this out myself, but it looks like you can actually bundle all of the stuff into a single file. So this is almost like that whole static compiled um, file basing that Go does where you compile everything into a simple, a single dependency. So if we do deno uh, bundle dash dash help, we can see it gives us like an example of how to do it. So it can 
um, we can basically say deno bundle and we can take a TypeScript file and we can bundle it as a single JS file with all the dependencies. So I think this might help us in a Docker environment to run kind of a bundle up front and then take the output bundle and have that as a multi-stage build for containers. The other example I wanted to show you was how to run a more complex application like a web server. So for that, if we take a look at the folder I've created in the source directory, I have a server.js which has that file here. So we say import from, you can see we do the import from URL um, right here. And then we do this um, function that basically starts up our web server on port 5000. Um, so if we say deno, so if we do ls, we can see it's in our source directory. So we have to say deno run source and then it'll be our server.js. Now look at what happens here. It goes and downloads our dependencies. It does compile a TypeScript file here and then we get error permission denied network access so we need to run with the allow net flag so this is because the sandbox environment cannot access the web server okay so we it's not like node.js where anything can just run and has the access so what we need to do is the same thing but we go allow net there's also various other flags like um, allow files and certain IO operations. So you can actually restrict that too. So there we go. We've got hello world from Deno. So this is our application now running exposed on localhost 5000. So very easy to get an application up and running. And I like to use containers to kind of um, give me this throwaway environment. So you can see we've built a, a container from Debian. We've installed all this stuff. And now we can just uh, close the container. We can exit out. So all our work is gone. So what we want to do now is write up a Docker file so that we can get Deno installed into a Docker file and we can use that as a base image for all Deno type microservices. So if you go over to hub.docker.com and you just search for node um, and you can do this for every programming language like Python, um, C Sharp and all of them, they all have like a base image. Um, that you can actually use as a Docker file. So you can say from node and then you can just add your code and get going. When I was looking at, at this and I searched for Deno, um, there doesn't seem to be an official Deno image. Now I did find a couple of community built images. Um, so you can see like this one here has an Alpine CentOS uh, Debian and Ubuntu image. And I've kind of used what I found on the community to kind of bootstrap a Docker file together. So if we take a look at the Deno folder, um, inside the Deno folder, we have Deno.dockerfile. So I created this as kind of like a base image. Now take a look at this. This is everything, the source of truth of how to install Deno, perfectly um, stated as I, as I did earlier, but this time in a Docker file. So we don't have to type the commands manually. So I start off by saying from Debian bus to slim, I specify the Deno version, so it's very easy to change it in an environment variable. We do app get update, we install curl, CA certificates and unzip um, that we're going to need. We also then go to the GitHub release page, download the latest or sp that specific version um, of the uh, zip file. We then extract it, we apply the permissions, we move the binary to the uh, user bin directory so we can execute it and then we remove all those dependencies that we installed we then add a deno user and we give it ownership on the demo deno directory the deno directory is kind of where all the dependencies will be uh, cached so you can kind of configure this as you want and then we just set a basic entry point so this becomes our deno base image now to build this i can just say docker build i can say dot and what we want to do is dash f so we want to say base or we want to say deno.dockerfile and then we want to tag it as um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say aimvector which is my github account my docker hub account and I'm going to tag this as as deno and so that so the image's name is just deno and then the tag is 1.0 since that's the version of deno we're installing and buster slim is the operating system so go ahead and build this and that'll do all the steps that we've just done in the container but now we actually have an image that we can reuse so now what we want to go ahead and do is build a microservice that can use this file so we can just start rolling out services on top of deno so this is actually easy if you take a look at the the left here the folder structure we have a docker file and then what we say we say from aim vector deno 1.0 so this becomes your reusable base image for different versions of deno and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say copy source um, into the deno directory 
So source being our source folder here with the server.js. And then I'm just going to run a command, say deno run allow net and start up my, my server.js. So very, very simple Docker file. And to build that, we're going to run the same similar command. But this time I'm going to say um, just build the Docker file and I'm going to tag this as I'm just going to tag it as deno app and we're just going to call this is v1 of our application go ahead and run that you can see that's very quickly built so what i can do to run that i can say docker run itrm to remove it when it's done i'm going to expose port 5000 is this time i'm not going to have to mount anything i can just run my deno application and we see that it's doing the same thing this time it's going and downloading it's compiling some my server typescript files downloading all the dependencies this time it's running from a docker container so we've containerized it um, which is very cool so now that we have our container built, you can go ahead and push that to a registry. And I always like to showcase this. If you have Kubernetes running on your local machine on Docker for Windows or in the cloud, I always like to showcase how to run these things in modern container cloud native environments. So what I've done here is I just say kubectl create. I'm going to create a namespace that's going to hold all our applications. I'm going to call that example app. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl um, in the example app namespace, I'm going to say apply dash F and I have this deployment file. You can have a look at that. So I have this deployment file and I also have a service file that will tell Kubernetes how we want the application to be running and how do we want it exposed to the public. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the entire folder. And then what we do is we're going to say kubectl um, get pods and we can see Kubernetes is creating two instances of our container. And we can also say kubectl get service and we can see we have our application exposed over localhost as a load balancer and now since we are hosting it on kubernetes as a load balancer we don't have to specify a port so i'm on localhost and this is coming from kubernetes so deno running in a container on kubernetes very 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 cool if we take a look at the deployment folder this is how we expose the traffic so we create this thing called a service and type load balancer so whether you're running on your local or in the cloud kubernetes will go and issue a load balancer because i'm running in docker for windows kubernetes will issue like a virtual load balancer um, and it'll run it on port 80 and it'll map to target port 5000 so let's let's go have a look at the deployment file um, very very simple it's a type deployment and here we basically describe um, kubernetes how to run our application so we say i want two replicas i want to run this deno app that we're running and i want to run it as port 5000 i also tell kubernetes what sort of resources my app is going to use so if it uses too much memory or too much cpu it'll get throttled or it will be restarted automatically so I thought I'd like to share that for those who are new to kubernetes um, also check the links down below if you're new to kubernetes and things and you want to have a look at how to run kubernetes and how to manage it how to monitor it how to do secret management all of that stuff is down below as well as a docker development guide so that is it for the basics of deno hope you guys um, learned something new and were able to take something out of this video and as always let me know down in the comments below what sort of stuff you'd like me to cover in the future leave a like subscribe and until next time Peace.